You guys, we all love the bokeh that we get on our DSLRs, right? That blurred background and the subject in focus, it gives it a more professional look. And it's sad that the iPhone still doesn't have video portrait mode. But what if I told you the footage you're seeing right now is being shot on my iPhone 11 Pro Max? So the little bit of blur that you're seeing around me is on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Not natively, it's with the help of an app called Focus Live. And I'll get into that and show you what else the app can do and how good it is. What are the shortfalls, some of the things that it cannot do perfect. But all in all, let me know how this footage is. And right now, let's dive into what more this app can do. So when you turn on the app, this is what you have on screen. So on the bottom left, you have the button for enabling the front facing camera. Next to that, you have your aspect ratio. So you can choose if you want the filmic look, you can go for this. Next up, this is the record button, but it also shows you the depth map. So as you can see, it is really mapping the speaker I have here. Right now, it's on my hand. So if I were to record this, it would definitely put my hand in focus and the background would be defocused. Now, beside that, you have your filters and then you have settings. All right. So now on the bottom right where you see the film strip, the clips that you've recorded are loaded here. So let's go back. And on the left over here, bottom left, you have the project. So this is when you take it into editor and edit it. That's how it looks. So for the intro you saw, this is how it looks in the editor. So I'm going to open up this project here. All right. So as you can see, already the blur has been applied. So if I move it along, you can see the background is definitely blurred. Now, if I want, it works best with faces, but really for any object. So if I tap on my face now continuously, as you can see, it still doesn't have video portrait. It is going to track my face. But what if I told you the footage you see and does that very nicely? It can track anything you want, but right now I want it to be on my face. Now, bottom left, you have your aperture. So now you can decide how much of the blur you want. If I put it all the way down, F20, so you can see everything is in focus. So this is what you would normally see if you were recording with the native camera app. So obviously it wouldn't blur the background. But now if I take the slider up, it's doing its magic and maybe at 2.3, F2.3, you can see the background has been blurred. Again, without any sort of blur. And now we are at F2, which is quite wide. Now you also have focus, so you can change the focus to be on the background or on yourself. I'm not gonna mess with that now. On shape, you can decide what the shape of that bokeh is going to be. I leave it to basic because it has the best fall off and looks the most natural, but you have different shapes to play around with. As you can see some retro ones, which looks kind of weird to me, but yeah, for me, uh, I prefer the basic. Now highlights, you can tweak that around. All right. Now you can also change the speed of your clip. You can mess around with the colors, the contrast, basic editing stuff of your clip. And you can reverse it. You can increase or decrease the opacity. You can transform the clip if you want, rotate right, left, whatever, flip it. So you get the basic functionality that you have. Now over here on the toggle, if you go into sound, you can add some music directly from your phone. You can take it from video, something you have in your files, some sounds that they have inbuilt in this app, or you can add a voiceover if you want. Now, when you go to render this, you go here. Now, at the bottom, you can choose the frame, uh, sorry, the resolution. So I'll leave it at 1080p. And you go up. And now if you tap on export video, it's going to export your video. It's going to take some time and you get the final product that you saw in the intro. So this app is quite extensive and there's a lot you can do with it. But the best part is that in a controlled lighting situation like this in my studio, this works out pretty good. I mean, obviously it's not perfect. So if we go back and if I zoom in, as you can see that it's not really blurred out the speaker right outside my shoulder, but all in all, it's still better than having nothing. 
and at least the ability to get portrait video is just amazing on your iPhone. And we don't know if the iPhone 12 Pros are gonna bring this, I don't think so, but at least now you know that you can get portrait video on your iPhone. So that is the app guys. I hope that gave you kind of an idea of how this is working. Still, I'm shooting on the 11 Pro Max with the background blur enabled. So this app definitely is not perfect. And you can just imagine the amount of computing power it requires to actually even apply this post-processing. I mean, not many phones can do that. But again, I think that's the magic of the iPhone's A13 chip for the iPhone 11 Pro Max that I'm using here. It's just good to have this ability because sometimes if you don't have your DSLR handy and you still want to make a video that looks close to professional, maybe not definitely not as good as a DSLR, you always have this app and you can use this and it'll give you well, close to the next best thing you have to actual DSLR token. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has been helpful. If you did find this helpful, definitely smash that like button and please subscribe to my channel as I keep posting such videos from time to time and I hope it helps you even more. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.